So today we're going to talk about seven things that you can do to lower your blood pressure. Um, an extremely high blood pressure would be, we have the systolic and the diastolic. And by the way, systolic is the contraction of the heart. Diastolic is the relaxation. And it has a lot to do with something called the autonomic nervous system, where you have the flight or fight, it's called sympathetic, and then the rest and digest uh, parasympathetic, which is the recovery. In, it's an active type of system that helps calm things down. So we have a balance of those two parts of the nervous system that are on, on automatic. Uh, so we're looking at uh, here, uh, extreme high would be 180 systolic or greater than that, or, and greater than 110 diastolic. High stage one would be 160 to 179 systolic, and diastolic would be 100 to 109. Uh, high stage two would be 140 to 159 systolic, 90 to 99 diastolic. Normal high, 139 to 121 systolic and 81 to 89 diastolic and normal 120 to 80. The, the important thing to know is that if you get high blood pressure just one time, uh, it's not very valid. You want to check it through the day and see if it's consistent. So the worst situation is that if your blood pressure is high all the time and it never comes down. And that just means that your arteries are very stiff and they're hardened versus it fluctuating here and there, that's a better situation to handle. There are seven things that I would recommend. Starting with, you guessed it, healthy keto. Why? Carbohydrates in general retain a lot of fluid. And what's one of the most common medications that they use for blood pressure? Diuretics. They're getting rid of excess fluid. You go on keto, you're going to dump a lot of fluid, and there comes the blood pressure just by going on a low-carb diet. Intermittent fasting, vital to decrease inflammation in your arteries, okay? Uh, also, the combination is very, very important to take the stiffness out of the artery itself. Number three, decreasing cortisol. What's cortisol? Cortisol is a stress hormone from the adrenal. And if the adrenals are involved and the cortisol is too high, what's gonna happen is the systolic is gonna go high first before the diastolic. Conditions of high cortisol, like Cushing syndrome, is high blood pressure but you'll normally see the systolic go high first and you just want to lower stress, okay? Go for long walks, eliminate as much stress as possible. I have videos on this. In fact, I'll put a link down below for one of them that involves a stress webinar that I did that will really help you reduce your body stress. Number four, taking vitamin D3. Vitamin D actually will help lower your blood pressure. If you're vitamin D deficient, blood pressure tends to go up. They don't know exactly why it does that. Uh, one theory is that the regulation of calcium supports the sympathetic nervous system in a certain way, but it actually will lower your blood pressure. Now, increasing vitamin K2. What is vitamin K2? It's different than K1, and this vitamin helps to remove excess amounts of calcium from your arteries and puts it in the bone. So these two together, uh, combined are really important in lowering blood pressure. Okay, number six. This is probably one of the more important ones, increasing your potassium. There's an incredible article written by several uh, medical doctors that involved taking larger amounts of potassium to drop blood pressure with incredible success. If you're low in potassium, your blood pressure will go up. One of the main functions of potassium is its ability to be a physiological tranquilizer and just calm the nervous system right down. Um, so it's a relaxer. So if you're deficient in potassium, blood pressure goes up. And guess what creates potassium deficiency? Refined sugars and carbohydrates. All right, last one is increasing magnesium. If you're deficient in magnesium, uh, your muscular system, the muscles within the vascular system are going to be tight and the blood pressure is going to go up. And it just so happens that the foods that are high in magnesium are also high in potassium, like in leafy green vegetables, okay? So these are the seven things that uh, you can do to lower your blood pressure. Thanks for watching. Want to zap the stress and introduce a little more zen into your life? Follow these seven steps for a more peaceful path. One, eat a healthy diet. Forget the ice cream binge and load up on fresh fruits and veggies and lean proteins. Your body will thank you with a happier outlook. 2. Get enough sleep. You'll be better able to handle stress that comes your way. Didn't catch enough Z's last night? 
grab a nap for a mood boost. 3. Get moving. Take a stroll around the block, walk the dog, or bike to the grocery store. Find an exercise buddy. It's always more fun to exercise with a friend. Exercise releases feel-good chemicals that will lift your spirits. 4. Try some tunes. Soothing music can lower blood pressure, heart rate, and anxiety. Upbeat tunes can help you blow off steam. 5. Come up with a stress relief toolkit. Meditate. Take a long walk. Watch a comedy. Curl up with a good book or light some candles. Find what soothes you. 6. Enjoy nature. Work in your garden, walk in the woods, or relax in the park. A change of scenery can brighten your mood. 7. Get social. Have lunch with a coworker. Phone a friend. Volunteer. Take a class. Being around other people will give you a fresh perspective and help you find your happy place. It's all about what works for you. So start letting go of the stress in your life and move to your place of peace.